it, it actually leads to social evolution. And when you prevent them in a dictatorship, it stops social evolution altogether. Does that help? Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, this is, this is more or less, one this is more end. or less correct to you say because uh, we do have examples by the dozen in what you say, but there are some limits where even uh, 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 democratic governments suppress some information. Oh, sure. uh, and uh, the, the complaint from uh, the opposing side is that uh, it shouldn't be suppressed. Yes. Uh, it, it, even in the United States it is happening in some accidents, not all of them, but, but some. And, and this leaves room for uh, underground discussion that, uh, you know, this was not so as the government presented it. Uh, and uh, this is a subjective point that we will never have uh, proven answers to it as history goes by. Maybe after you know, several centuries, people will know things better. But overall, I agree with you that uh, in our societies today, this is how it works out. But not absolutely. Uh, a government somehow decide to, to stop at the point and, and suppress the information. And unfortunately, this is a, a point of life that we have to live with. Well, suppression of information is very important. I think all political parties attempt to suppress information you to the maximum it. extent that they can. But when you suppress information in a dictatorship, nobody knows. Um, and it's not uh, politically expedient to uncover that because you could die. In a democracy, if you can uncover the information, it can lead to uh, explosive change. Look at what happened with Snowden uh, and the NSA uh, secret wiretaps. It's been explosive. Uh, the Obama administration is, uh, is on course to do everything they can to hurt Snowden. Uh, and uh, uh, so the jury is still out. But I, I would agree with you uh, almost completely. The differences, in my view, in yours is very small, and that is that the change, because there is active attempts to suppress on both sides, the change is not continuous, it's discrete. Uh, and so... And it's still going. I mean, it's one of my goals. Right, and, and it may not come out smoothly, it comes out like in the Snowden affair in Macklin. If it hadn't been for Snowden, we wouldn't have known this for some time. In this direction. Oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Yes, yes. Yeah, actually, looking at most of your questions, uh, I mean, what I can feel is that you're trying to address the question of when a dynamical system, any dynamical system, when does it become most efficient or the opposite? I mean, when does it become most productive or efficient, yeah, or, or the opposite? Uh, efficient is a tough word. But productive, let's say. Uh, I, I can deal with efficient and then you can continue. Yeah. Okay. Um, efficient is uh, maybe a difficult word. Um, what Christensen and others have found and what I predict is that the more efficient is a firm, uh, the more trouble it gets in. Uh, there is a certain amount of inefficiency that's necessary for evolution to occur. And uh, most firms attempt to, re to increase, to optimize themselves by making themselves very efficient. But as a result, they become less productive overall. So I would revise that productive yeah. in the sense that in that context, there is a concept in chaos theory as the edge of chaos. The dynamical system is, uh, productivity is highest when it is on the edge of chaos. And there have been some attempts of modeling the edge of chaos, organizational dynamics as well as that. So do you agree with that or would you go on for some uh, I, I haven't, I have studied chaos some, uh, but I have problems with chaos. I, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, I have problems with it because uh, we're, uh, it seems to me premature because the issues are more fundamental. Uh, chaos is a very nice theory, but uh, the issues are very fundamental. Uh, 
my, my interest is in a hybrid team. If the hybrid team is experiencing chaos, we'll get problems. So uh, I want to uh, try to understand uh, my colleagues are convinced that you can know everything there is to know about a hybrid team. One of the advantages of computers is that we can know everything uh, instantaneously, but there's so much information coming off that the knowledge is very poor. And, uh, and there, what I have found is that there are natural limits, barriers, to how much understanding we can get. We can know everything that these robots are seeing, or we can know everything these robots are doing, but we can't know both simultaneously. So I'll, I'll leave the chaos up to you, but I, it's a really good question. I don't know the answer to it. Yeah, question. You make me you want read one more? Yeah, thank you. You press uh, my mind. And uh, when we try to understand the physical systems and economical systems, we use the objective uh, point of view that something happens yes. there. But in the society, we are also subjects. Yes. Something happens in, in everybody. So, the problem to make uh, uh, complete, uh, consistent economical theory is how we can uh, input in our theoretical concepts the inner degree of freedom of the human beings. And I think because we live in a world where we see around us the bad, the destroy. When I kill you, I decide to kill you because you destroy my plan, then it's not a simple physical event. Right. It is a spiritual event. Mm -hmm. And as economical scientists, we must uh, put our head at the point. Um, it gives me a chance to, uh, do you know the journal, uh, the blog, Econophysics, by Dirk Helving? It's a first Helving. Uh, Helving uh, is uh, uh, the editor of Econophysics blog, and he complains that, in, in the blog this year, he complained uh, that, uh, that we need a new model. Uh, this is a refrain for many uh, econophysicists, econos, e econom, econ, economists, psychologists, organizational theories, theorists, etc. Many are complaining that we need a new theory. I wouldn't use the word spirit, but I would use observation so that uh, I have an observer here and as Gazanego would point out, the observer is a, has a speaker over here, and this speaker talks to us and tells us what's going on in the world, and I also can act and move about. Uh, and those two are independent actions that influence each other. And I think that one of the problems with game theory is that that's not taken into account, and that's why uh, Helbin uh, was complaining about uh, the need for new theory. But he's not the only one. Many others have pointed that out as well. And also your uh, locality, your thought, must be extended to non-locality because uh, we know that every physical event now has local causality, includes local causality, but also includes global causality. Well, there is non-locality. This is a message of quantum theory and uh, complexity theory. There's uh, there's non-locality between a husband our and a wife. Our mind is a local process, but our processes in our mind includes non-local processes also. Yes, well, the uh, possible. Uh, but here's an example of non-locality. The wife tells the husband to go to the store uh, to buy eggs, mm -hmm. and he goes to the store, and sometimes he buys eggs and sometimes he doesn't. So there is an example of non-locality. Thank you. Thank you very much for the lovely discussion. Uh, we you. can continue discussing the issues uh, at the coffee break. The major question is what can uh, uh, 
and quantum physics offer? Uh, what uh, new or fresh ideas can quantum physics offer to us that traditional economics, uh, which uh, is an old field, uh, is not new, uh, has not been able to uh, give to us? Uh, like any new field as it comes out, there's a lot of expectation. Uh, there's a lot of uh, ideas that people may have that uh, will, uh, when the, this new field uh, emerges, it will uh, uh, give uh, uh, answers that have not been able to be found before. Um, so is this uh, the truth? Is this real? In this new field, uh, is the physics going to provide to us uh, uh, answers that are dramatically different? and explain economics or the uh, world economy in a different way uh, to improve or uh, uh, in, any, uh, in any other method uh, provide to us information. At this point I would like to thank you, the invited speaker who came here to be with us, the organizing and the scientific committee, the attendants who came from far away, and uh, of course the volunteer group that uh, support our conference. My deep thanks to come to the companies that have paid for this event. And uh, at this point, I have to inform you that the next conference will be organized in 2015. From this point, we are starting to work for this conference. Thank you, Dr.